Today we're gonna to show you how to take wax and put it into candles. It sounds like it's easy, but we're gonna share some tips and tricks to hopefully make your candle making a lot easier. We've got paraffin wax already melting in here. And we're mixing in beeswax with the paraffin wax because we've read that <laughs> that it can be done that it can be done <laughs> and also that when you mix the beeswax in with the paraffin wax it helps it burn more evenly and not pull away from the sides so this paraffin wax here is made for jars but we're going to go ahead and help by adding some beeswax to the mix a really good ratio if you have enough beeswax is one part beeswax to one part paraffin wax and if you're making a jarred candle again look for the paraffin wax made for jars so yesterday we tried just getting big chunks and melting it like that first, but we that didn't work out so well. So I discovered that if I just take the chisel here, this is the easiest way to do it. You could probably get this done with a knife too, but just chisel away small chunks. We just got a little kitchen scale here. Then we're gonna weigh them and make sure that we've got our ratio right because if you don't have the proper mix of ratio and you add your scent in, it might not smell very strong. Okay, so I weighed this beforehand before chopping it up. You can see my little kitchen scale only holds about eight ounces at a time. And then I just dropped this in, careful not to splash. So I knew this was a pound, so I'm just gonna put this in here. So yesterday when we were making candles, we did two different methods. We used a double boiler to melt the wax, which not my favorite method, it took a long time. It did keep the wax from getting too hot. We used the microwave as well, and that made the wax get way too hot. It melted it quicker. We spent just as long waiting for it to cool down and it didn't save us any time. So we bought this crock pot yesterday at the thrift store. It was 10 bucks, they had a bunch of different options down there. We're not ever gonna use food in this and it is melting this stuff really quickly. It's working really well. Next, we're gonna be getting our wicks ready so that way we can pour our wax over the top. It's important when you're looking for a wick that the size works with the size jar or candle that you're working with. If you've got a larger or wider candle, you may need multiple wicks and you should be able to just look on the wick package and it'll tell you what it will do. I'm just taking this wick and I'm poking it through the bottom of the stabilizer. The wicks we buy are already dipped in wax. If yours are not, then you're gonna to have to dip them. Once you get that in there like that, you're going to want to figure out a way to stabilize it over your jar. Zeb's taken a little piece of wood and he's drilled a hole in it so that way the wick will fit. If you don't have access to that, you can also roll it over a pencil or something similar. I'm just going to dip this real quick into the wax and immediately put it into my jar. Stick it to the bottom, make sure it's centered. You can mark the jar if you're worried about it. And then I like to take another stick and then just poke it down. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is pull your wick so it's nice and taut and it's straight. So that way when you pour, it's not all twisted inside your candle. Okay, so we're just using a meat thermometer here. I think a candy thermometer would be better because you could probably set it in there, but this works. You wanna pour between 130 and 140 degrees. If your temperature rises above 140 degrees, just turn off the heat and let it cool back down before you pour. It's really important that you melt your wax nice and slow, you don't get it too hot, and that you're pouring at the right temperature so that way you don't get too many divots and also it's gonna make it burn a lot better. Also, you don't wanna add your fragrance above 140 degrees because it will burn off your fragrance. So our temperature was just below 140 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and pour in our fragrance. You can want to use at least one half ounce of fragrance per pound. We're using three ounces total of fragrance in about five pounds. And every fragrance is gonna be a little different. Just read your directions and it'll show you and tell you what you need as far as ratio of wax to fragrance. We're using spiced pumpkin. We got these at Hobby Lobby. They're about $4 a container, but we used coupons. Sometimes the fragrances go on sale at Hobby Lobby and you'll save 30% on all your candle making supplies. So when that happens, if you're gonna be making a lot like for gifts or for an upcoming event, be sure to stock up. So because we melted up so much at once, I don't want to pour 
with this big container. So we use this little Pyrex measuring cup. Oh, that's why. So that I can be more accurate. Also, so you don't get wax all over the outside of the jar. We microwaved this container so that it was a little warmer. You can still see the wax is drying around the edges a little bit. So I've heard if you pour it halfway, let it set up and then pour it the rest of the way, you won't get the divots in the top, which is a problem we had yesterday on our first pour. Yeah, we used a heat gun and I'll show you that method too to get the divots out. It's much easier if you don't have to mess around with that. Okay, so we're going halfway on these. I think you can do three. Hmm, maybe. Maybe we'll just do a third on this one. All right, so I've got a lot of wax around the ring of this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this back in the microwave 30 seconds at a time, melt that back down, and I'll probably just get a scraper and get this stuff that was here on the counter and save that too, because I don't wanna waste any. I've been letting these sit for about half an hour at room temperature and we're ready to pour the top half of the candle in. I turned the crock pot down to the low setting on the temperature setting. That way it would keep my wax warm, but not ruin it or, or destroy the scent in it by getting too hot since we've already scented it. I'm about out of wax, so I'm just gonna try to keep these as even as possible. That way they all look about the same and then we'll top them off as I have extra. So for cleanup on the crock pot, I've just left it on the low setting. It's still a bit warm. I'm just gonna use this paper towel. You kinda wanna be careful not to touch the sides. It's, it's still hot. It's not, it's not hot enough that it'll burn me right off, but it'll be uncomfortable if you let your hand rest on it. So got that mostly wiped out and absorbed into the paper towel and that's it. We're gonna leave it like that and we'll store it. Our candles are all set up, so I'm gonna be taking off our wick holders here so we can use them should we ever decide to make candles again. I think I will, because then I can create scents that I like to have in my home. Maybe not necessarily to resell, because that was a lot of work. <laughs> um, I'm going to cut these a quarter of an inch long, any longer than that, and they have too big of a flame and it can be a fire hazard and it's gonna burn your candle too fast. So this one ended up being a little shorter. We didn't quite have enough wax warmed up and we didn't find any more at a thrift store. So we're gonna hang on to this one, just keep that here at the house. And then these we'll probably sell at the shop. Because we're gonna be selling these at the shop, we're going to go ahead and put a caution label underneath them so that way they're good. Make sure that you're checked with your state or the country that you live in in case there's additional regulations for candle making and warning labels just to make sure that you're within all the things. Whenever you're dealing with fire or anything like that, you wanna be safe. These all have lids, which is great because they will help keep that fragrance inside. If they don't have lids, over time, the fragrance won't be as strong as it is right when you pour them. You can also color your candles if you want. I like the color of these, especially since we added the beeswax. It's like a creamy white. Yeah. When we did just the paraffin yesterday, it was more translucent. We didn't get the craters that we got yesterday when we did our other ones. Those ones, we probably poured them a little too hot and we also filled them all the way up all at once and as they cooled, they made like divots and craters in there. These are nice and even across the top and it worked out really well to pour them in two stages, half and half. If you don't follow us on social media, we attempted this yesterday. We had some serious audio failure and we also had some inconsistencies in our candle making. We did some research, we found better candle making information, so we recreated the entire video. I'll have Zeb post a picture of the candles that we made yesterday. Oh, yeah, I'll so that way you can see what they actually look like. The jars were really pretty. We went out and we actually went out last night and thrifted more jars and bought more scents and found some more wax at the thrift store so that we could create these candles. I think we're all waxed out though. I don't think they've got any more supply down there right now. I also don't think I want to make any more. No, I'm maybe maybe for the holidays. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. <laughs>